Welcome to this daily devotional for Thursday, July 16, 2020. I'm Mark Myers, the Associate Pastor of the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, and I welcome you into this time, a sacred time and space where we can focus together on God, love of God, love of neighbor. Hear the invocation. O God, prepare us through the active presence of your Spirit to come before you worthy and to ask of you rightly, to enlighten our understanding, to purify our every desire, and quicken our will, so that we may be obedient to thy word. Strengthen us in every right purpose. Direct this time of worship, so that we may magnify your name. As we are your good, blessed children and servants. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue digging through Psalm 37. Today we start with verse 27. Psalm 37, verse 27. Turn away from evil. Do good. Then you will live in the land forever. The Lord loves justice. He will never leave his faithful alone. They are guarded forever. But... The children of the wicked are eliminated. The righteous will possess the land. They'll live on it forever. The mouths of the righteous recite wisdom. Their tongues discuss justice. The instruction of their God is in their hearts. They don't miss a step. The wicked, on the other hand, target the righteous, seeking to kill them. But the Lord won't leave the righteous to the power of the wicked and won't let the righteous be found guilty. When they are judged. God bless the reading of the psalm today. It, it seems simple. Don't do evil. Do good. Right? I mean, it's, it's hilarious being a parent because you instruct your children. You give your children boundaries and rules to help teach them how to do good things. Don't play with the electrical wires, you'll get electrocuted. Don't touch the stove, you'll get burned. Uh, Don't hurt people because you don't want to be hurt. And yet, (laughs) they continue to make mistakes, right? Because they're children. Uh, And they're impulsive and they don't think through it. But in my experience, we as adults are not usually much better. We are still impulsive. We still act and talk and say things without thinking. Little comments even. I made a comment to my wife not too long ago, just a a few hours ago actually. Uh, It's dumb, stupid thing I shouldn't have said. And she'll forgive me and and I apologize. It seems easy, and yet it's a struggle. Don't do evil, do good. And you'll be okay if that's what you do. And so we we ask for help because that's the only way we can do it is with God's help, God's hand guiding us, God's spirit directing us, God giving us the instruction we need. Our epistle reading comes from the Letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verse 12 is where we're going to start. Ah, Man, I love this passage. Therefore, as God's choice, holy and loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Be tolerant with each other and If someone has a complaint against you, forgive them. The Lord forgave you, so forgive each other. And over all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. The peace of Christ must control your hearts, a peace into which you were called in one body, 
and be thankful. The word of Christ must live in you richly. Teach and warn others with all the wisdom by singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Whatever you do, whether in speech or action, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to God the Father through him. Powerful, powerful five verses of scripture. Examine yourself today. It's a good opportunity to do this when we read passages like this from Paul. Are you compassionate? Are you kind? Humble? Gentle? And patient? Are you forgiving? Do you put love above all things? Are you at peace? Are you thankful? Are you grateful? These are things we can control. They're attitudes we can adopt. We can work on them, actually. We can invest time in them because we can also invest time in doing the opposite of the things that I just mentioned. But if we do actually invest time, if we work, if we practice like we were preparing for a marathon, if we were preparing for our work or whatever it is we do, if we spent that time practicing compassion, practicing patience, practicing love, practicing gratefulness, thankfulness, our attitudes change, our lives change, we change, and we allow change in others to take place as well. Today's reading comes from the Journal of George Fox. And friends, though you may have tested, tasted the power and been convinced and have felt the light, yet afterwards you may feel winter storms, tempests, and hail, and be frozen in frost and cold and a wilderness and temptations. Be patient and still in the power and still in the light that doth convince you to keep your minds to God. In that be quiet, that you may come into the summer, that your flight may not be in the winter. For if you sit still in the patience which overcomes in the power of God, there will be no flying. For the husbandman, and he has sown his seed, he is patient. For by the power and by the light you will come to see through and feel over winter storms, tempests, and all the coldness, barrenness, emptiness. And the same light and power will go over the tempest head, the tempter's head, which power and light were before he was. And so in the light standing still, you will see your salvation. You will see the fresh springs in the power and light, your minds being kept low for that which is out of the power and lights and lifted up. But in the power and light, you will see God revealing his secrets, inspiring, and his gifts coming unto you, through which your heart will be filled with God's love. Praise to him that lives forevermore and in which light and power his blessings are received. And so the eternal power of the Lord Jesus preserve and keep you in that. And so live every one in the power of God, that you may all come to be heirs of that and know that to be your portion. And the kingdom hath no end, and an endless life, which is the seed which the seed is heir of. And so feel that over all set, which hath the promise and blessing of God. From the journal of George Fox. A reminder to be patient. There is a, a reality, I think, in the life of most followers of Jesus Christ, most Christians, most disciples, where we have highs and lows, mountains and valleys, uh, powerful experiences of 
fellowship, faith, love, compassion, all these things I just said. Uh, in times of drought, times of spiritual emptiness, in the mystic tradition we refer to it as the dark night of the soul, uh, which comes much later. It's not something that you start with. You kind of start with this uh, wondering and then this awakening, and uh, then it builds and it builds until it disappears. Often great and tenured spiritual people talk about how they have no sense of the divine after decades sometimes of being faithful, of being in God's presence. And so we be patient. That is kind of the trick is to walk with people, to hold out, to realize God's love, God's light is there. It was always there. And we are the ones who are just cut off from it. And if we can realize that God is with us, regardless of how we feel, how we're experiencing the world, we can make it through so much. Friends, today let's <clears throat> be in prayer for the servants, for those who are patient, for those who are waiting, for those who serve, regardless of what's happening in our world. Lord, we thank you for your servants, those who serve us in ways we see, those who serve us in ways we don't, those who are patiently waiting for you, doing your work, loving justice and mercy. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for your servant, our servant, Jesus Christ, who came to lead us in servant leadership. Allow us to lead like he led, to serve as he served. We pray this prayer in his name, praying the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, until tomorrow, I bid you goodbye. I leave you with this benediction. Live today in Christ's presence, remembering he is near, and will sustain you as you serve in his name. Amen.